What's going on, Unfazed crew? Welcome to What A Week It's Been. I'm your host, Ben Steerick. And today we are joined by the amazing Scott on tape. I'm a huge fan of this guy. Been watching his videos for a very long time. Scott, it's awesome to have you on the pod, man. Thanks for joining us. Be here, Ben. Thank you, man. This is great, man. So what's new with you? Um, looks like you've been crushing it on the videos lately. Some of the stuff's been a little on the darker side, but I know viewers love that. Let's uh, let's hear what's going on in your world, man. What's going on? Yeah, uh, well, I... Uh, I just got back from, I was in uh, Atlanta, Florida twice. Like I flew down there in January, then flew back mid-February, then went back down end of February, came back early March. Now I'm going back to Alabama Tuesday for a week. I do some work with uh, another podcast down there, X5 Podcast, um, who would uh, have uh, something, I, I do a lot of stuff with them. And we film some mm -hmm. videos and then I'm going to go down to the Pensacola down to the panhandle for a few days. See what I can find. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. have anything planned for that area yet. I have a couple of things in mind. I've been down there before. A lot of stuff I've done in, that I did in my first year or two of YouTube. I did the panhandle. So I'm thinking even if there's stuff I want to redo, I don't mind mm -hmm. redoing stuff nowadays uh, because a lot of people didn't see my, like, you know, it's a small channel still somewhat. So you know, back in the day, you know, nobody really saw some of the stuff I did. And I thought, wow, that's really cool stuff. Like, I'm just, I just thought of one just now. I'm like, oh man, I'm going back. I just thought of it just now. So sorry. I was like, oh yeah, I'm going back there. But, um, yeah, some of it's been on the darker side. It's not by, by, um, particular like design. I haven't, uh, it's just, I find when I'm traveling, like I, when I'm traveling so much, I'm trying to do things that are a little, faster to edit because if you mm -hmm. look back about a year ago everything i did is so heavily edited with clips and interviews and stuff and that takes hours as you know yeah you know, it takes real real pain in the butt sometimes so i on these last youtubes i'm like i'm gonna do things that are easier and maybe just two or three paragraphs i got to memorize instead of pages and pages because i try to memorize everything that i'm talking about um so it has been on the dark side because I, you know, it's graves and things like that. But I've always liked that, you know, the darker side of things and true Definitely. crime, celebrity scandals, somewhat. But I've got lots. I've got two fun ones coming up in a row. I have nothing to do with death. <laughs> and then I've got tons of uh, film locations I just did in Reno and Utah and Vegas and LA. That's all from October, November. So tons of nonsense, but those ones, again, I, I worked so hard in filming them. They're just putting them together as a monster. Plus my uh, camera got ran over by a car uh, three oh. weeks ago in, 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 Al in Alabama and had all my edits. So two of the filming location ones I had, they were close to being done. They had taken me about 10 hours each to edit up to that point. Wow. All of them. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Bucks. Yeah, you know, I... Once I realized it was gone, I was like, there's nothing I can, you, I can't, you, know, you can't dwell on it too, too much. I mean, I did, but yeah. You know. Was it a runaway moonshiner or like who, like what, how, how to get run over? I feel like there's <laughs> one, of my good friends, one of my good friends. Uh, I was, it's actually, no, it's, it's the other pair of pants that look like these. I was wearing them and I put them on the last minute to go out to do some cemetery hunting at night, ghost hunting. It was just me and his wife and a few friends. And, um, I said, no, let me change my pants. I want to put the ones with the zipper on so nothing falls out. Yeah. Do you think I zipped it up when I got in the car? No. So I did not. He said, let's go down the bottom of this hill where the covered bridge is. I'm like, yeah. We got down the bottom of the bridge. I'm like, where's my phone? He goes, let me call it. Straight to voicemail. I'm like, that's not a great sign. Because it was my can it was that. It was my it was my iPhone. And um then <laughs> we walked up the hill and my friends are like, here it is. Oh shit. I'm like, that is not good. What? And I picked it up. It was just Apple did everything they could. They did. Every... I, I got a hand it to Apple. They really tried. Yeah, you get a crushed phone and a free U2 album. So, you know, it's it's a win win. <laughs> Why is everybody talking to me about that recently? But did you did you see my live chat or no? No, no, I didn't. I just came to mind. I don't know. I because I because I'm a huge U2 fan. And then uh, we were talking about them on my live chat the other day and Somebody brought up, I hate when they put their album on my phone. I'm like, that was the best day of my life. It was like, a gift. Yeah. So many people were upset about it, but I get it because you couldn't get it off. That's 
you know, I, I don't think you two knew about that at the time, obviously. But I remember that day when that album came out. I was like, wait, because they had the press conference and all of a sudden it was on our phones. I was like, it's free and it's on my phone already. I it was, was so cool. I thought it was kind of a cool move. I mean, it's like yeah. who's like who's done that before or since? You know what I mean? No, we've done it since. <laughs> I don't think yeah. that was a bit of an issue. I think the if if you could just delete it, I think people would have been happy. You know, sure. Free out, but you couldn't delete it. You couldn't. It just kept coming back, coming back. <laughs> And it's 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 a good there's it's a good album. They're, the set the album right after that was way better. Yeah. So if you're a big U2 fan, what are your top three U2 albums? Gun to your head if you had to pick. What are you talking? Hacktong Baby, Joshua Tree, Zeropa. Or <clears throat> all that you can't leave behind, maybe. I love them all, but Hacktong <laughs> Baby and Joshua Tree for sure. Zeropa, that's an interesting choice. That's like one that like a lot of people skip. That's interesting. Yeah, I know. I love Zero. You put on Zeropa, like you go for a drive at night, put on Zeropa, it just flows. It's just, it's a, it, it awesome. has a great driving album. That's great. One of my favorite U2 albums, which I feel like a lot of people are kind of like on the fence about, like you either love it or hate it, is uh, How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb. I really, really love that album. Yeah, I love that album too. I think, I think yeah. it's a very, um, uh, it, it's a disjointed album in terms of I feel like it's kind of like all that you can't leave behind the sequel. It's like mm -hmm. a collection of really good singles put together, yeah. radio friendly yeah. singles. So it doesn't sure. have the flow like other albums do, but it's got like yeah. some of their greatest songs ever. Vertigo yeah. comes from the table. Uh, yeah. Yahweh, like so many good songs. Yeah, so good. Yeah, Man. I love. It. Oh yeah, I saw them a few years ago with Beck as the opener, and it was so weird. Because they crushed it. It was for the anniversary of uh, Joshua Tree. And it was such a good show. And Beck opened up and got, like, such a cold reception from the audience. And I'm like, it's freaking Beck. Like, Beck is amazing. Yeah. But, like, really, I don't know, I don't know what it was. But Beck. it was, like, cold reception for Beck. Yeah, he's close to their age group. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, I thought he crushed it. I thought he crushed it. But apparently the audience didn't agree. Uh, he thought, well, I mean... Beck's Beck, right? He's he's such an artist. He probably didn't play much from Odelay or um uh what's the album before Odelay, the one with Loser, Mellow Gold. He probably yes, yeah. he played most of the new stuff. Yeah, that'll do it right there. If you go see Beck, you you better play Loser and you better play um you know uh you know Sex Laws and what's the other one? Uh the mic you got oh, like e -pro. microphone. What's that one? Oh um. I got two turntables and a microphone. Where it's at? Where it's, where it's at. at. Yeah, you better play where it's at and loser. If you're back and I'm exactly. going to your show, you can exactly. be more, I've seen him before. And he was really good. Sex Laws. I just remember that song. But you know, certain bands, you got to play certain songs. Don't be too. Don't don't screw around. You know? Exactly. Don't, don't play them first. Don't play them last. Play them in the middle when we're all sitting down and ready. Exactly. When you when the build up has happened. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned something a second ago, and I wanted to touch on it before I forget. Uh, you said you and your friends went on a little ghost hunt. That was actually one of the questions I had for you that I wanted to touch on, because I don't know if you know, but I have a second channel where I do paranormal investigations and like historical sites that are haunted and I, things like that. Yeah, or, unfazed, that. yeah, Unfazed Frights. Check it out, guys, if you haven't. Link below. But um, after the video. But mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to ask you, going to all the cemeteries and stuff and all of these different locations, have you ever had any paranormal experiences? Or, you know, have you ever dipped your toes into paranormal investigations? Uh, I have done uh, paranormal investigations. I filmed with a channel called Barrier Beyond in Los Angeles. I took them to Frank Zappa's old property in, off of uh, Laurel Canyon in the Hollywood Hills. Cool. And cool. Um, they brought all that sort of ghost equipment, you know what I mean, that stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, you now we also, and I took them to some murder locations in the Hollywood Hills. Man, mm -hmm. we and they're a great channel. And then uh, my other friend, when we were down in Alabama a couple of weeks ago, we went to a cemetery and abandoned church at night, and some weird stuff happened on camera. I'm a, I'm a natural skeptic. No, we're not even that. I'm just a skeptic. Yeah, you know. And I, so I don't. Some things, some weird things have always happened. Oh, I did, I did do a video. It's on the, it's on my channel. But you, do you know Poison, the band Poison? Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. So Ricky Rocket, the drummer, oh, he, yeah. has, he has two YouTube channels, and one of his is like Ricky Rocket's Wild. Or I, I apologize to Ricky. What his second? He's got two channels. 
Poison Drummer, and then his other one. So we met up and we filmed a couple of videos together. And that for me is a kid that grew up in the eighties. I'm getting to hang out with Ricky Rocket. I was like, what? I watched one of the videos and I was like, damn. I was like, this yeah. is legit. I was like, that's yeah. amazing. Uh, uh, I mean, he 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 knew how starstruck I was, and that um, you know that that ended quickly. You know, because he's just a regular dude. But I mean, I was driving through the uh, I was driving on the Apple Valley parkway whatever going up to lancaster one day and phone rings with unknown number he says, hey scott's ricky man what's up i'm like oh my god you know if preteen me knew that ricky rocket was calling me to say let's go do a video and but we did this video and you see something happen in it and i can't explain it and i'm in there he, he's looking at me like can you explain this because he knows i'm a skeptic and i'm like no like something a flash that flew off of a gravestone i'm like where well, there's no wind nothing it was like the desert so mm -hmm. it was very very bizarre and uh so that was really cool so that was with ricky then with steve last week a couple weeks ago there's always and then traveling around cemetery i spent so much time in cemeteries um i'm not i, I i'm not afraid i you know nothing i stayed in uh when i was in decatur georgia a few weeks ago one of my locations was a cemetery and i happened to pick a hotel in decatur and it was right the cemetery was connected to the parking lot so okay. it was perfect. so i kept walking out middle of the night in decatur georgia not the best idea and walking up to the cemetery gates and looking in and like just you know thinking of, and i did a, a patreon video for it i was just looking in and like man that is kind of creepy at night it is a little yeah. creepy but i would still walk around it you know you know if if i was in a safe area you know it's a, it's a different vibe when you do a cemetery by yourself i've done a few at night where I'm fully by myself and like that's a different vibe man like whether you're a skeptic or not like cemetery oh, yeah. alone in the dark at night like that shit gets a little oh, scary totally different at night yeah it's it's yeah. different and then everything creaks and there's always like you know a little bit of a little bit of wind and but during the day cemeteries are so beautiful and I yeah. like peaceful peaceful and I, I enjoy going to them and doing the story but I find them not depressing but there's always something sad whether the story yeah. I'm doing is sad, or it can be attributed to somebody who's lived a long life, but then I can I'll look to my left or right, I'll see somebody's grave, complete un, like non-famous person, mm -hmm. and you see their age, or you see maybe you know, a picture of them, and that can be depressing, you know. One of the heaviest ones we ever did was really early on when we first started doing ghost hunting on Unfazed Review before the Friday channel existed and my buddy Emmett and I went to Green Acres Cemetery in uh Scottsdale and um arizona and um we were we were walking around there my buddy Emmett's a huge skeptic and he's like one of the best people to go ghost hunting with because just like you he's like a very 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 healthy skeptic and he's always like trying to debunk what it is find right. a scientific reason which is good it's it's a healthy way to think you know sure but we went out there and we went to eddie guerrero's grave um, yeah, I knew, I knew, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah and uh there were a few others near there like children who had passed away and it was just very very sad you know and going there in the day, no biggie, you know, very tranquil, very peaceful. One of the munchkins from the Wizard of Oz is buried there, too. So kind of did a double dipper and visited both of them during the day. Super nice. No big deal. We went back at night nighttime. Whole different ballgame, man. One of the spookiest cemeteries at night. There's just something about it. There's just this like palpable energy that's just so freaky. And we were walking right by Eddie Guerrero's grave, um, like kind of like in front of it, maybe like six or seven feet. And my buddy Emmett turns and he's like, whoa. I'm like, what? And he's like, oh, he's like, there was a guy walking up towards us. And we shine the light, nobody there. Nobody and he was like, he's like, I thought like, you know, security or a groundskeeper was coming to tell us to get out of here. And the way he reacted and the way he was freaked out, I was like, oh, he's not lying. Like, that's the real deal. When you when you have a skeptic see something like that, yeah, they freak course. out. Yeah. The back. Like, that's the actual, I want more of that, you know? Wasn't there, isn't Green Acres, I remember... Um, I don't know which direction I was approaching it from, but where there was no fence, but isn't there a wall around it? I yeah, yeah, there's like a wall. So there's like, uh, when you walk in on the south side, there's like the wall that has all the bodies interred in it. No, isn't, there then, a brick, isn't there a brick wall surrounding the entire cemetery? Yeah, part? yeah, there is. Yeah. There is, yeah, I, yeah okay. I believe the east side of it, there's like mobile homes on the opposite side right. of that. That's what it, that's so, what it is. Yeah, I knew yeah, yeah. So there, is, there's definitely like a clear, like a clear barrier, you know. Right. Yeah, that was an interesting cemetery because I, 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 I wasn't, I was 
prepared. I was over prepared, I think, for Eddie Guerrero because he. I didn't really know much about him, but I wanted to yeah. do a video about him because I found it such an interesting story. But I found myself kind of stumbling through the story, but I wanted to do it. And then there's another. Isn't there another wrestler Barry near him or going to be? I Good question. That. I'm sure that I don't know. I don't. Yeah, know. I mentioned that in the video. Uh, I can't remember who. An older wrestler, not just mm -hmm. Ventura. Could be. I don't know. There's. I mentioned in the video. I know that. I think that there's a spot for an older wrestler near him. Interesting. Yeah, but I know it's his wife took his, her name off because she's going to be buried with her new husband. Wow, yeah, that's so wild. There's, there's two different headstones. I guess there's the new one now, which a lot of people were like wrote to me like, "Why would she do that? Why?" I'm like, "Because she's moved on, which is healthy, and you have to." And you know, yeah. Eddie, I'm sure was the love of her life, but she's met some. You know, she's got a. You know. People got to move yeah. on. Got to do her thing, man. Yeah. But yeah. did you get my message that I sent you? I sent you a message yesterday, but I know it was late your time because you're in Toronto right now. But I wanted to hear, because you do so many great videos on celebrities who've passed on. I wanted to hear your top 10 celebrities who you wish were still alive. I don't know if you had a chance to like mold this I did see. Anymore. I did. I saw it today. I saw it today. Okay. Um, I wanted to hear who, who and why. Or just It doesn't have to be in like you know, any particular order, but just like some of your favorites, just ones I'd love. Well, to number, number number one, hands down, would be uh, George Michael for celebrity that I wish was still alive. You, yeah. The ones that I wish were still alive. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Ones that were the ones that you wish were still alive and were still like doing their thing, like working George on Michael. George Michael, yeah. 120,000. Yeah. I mean, growing up, amazing. yeah, growing up, Elvis and George Michael were the first voices I remember mm -hmm. hearing. And not just hearing, I heard many other. I heard Elton John, I heard everything growing up. Grease yeah. sound. But the ones that stuck with me was Elvis Presley and George Michael. And nice. my sister loved Wham and loved George Michael. So I just, by proxy, kept hearing his music. So I was like, this guy's amazing. So I became a huge George Michael fan. So definitely George Michael would be number one because he's just uh, one of my favorite musicians. He's in my, my favorite musicians, uh, George Michael, Eminem, and um rem u2 which are the three most different artists in the world but that's you know that's the beauty of music right like you can love yeah. everything i saw you got this sweet rem tattoo recently that was pretty cool yeah i got that i'm gonna add something to it i hope next week yeah yeah nice big, dude that's awesome big rem fan um yeah, celebrity wise easy e would be another one i'd like to see what he'd be doing now you know be awesome. 60 roughly around you know mm -hmm. tupac again yes. you know uh just to see what kind of legacy he would have you know he's no he had so many albums that came out after he died that he didn't really have a hand in so i like to see what he would have done with his own music you know yeah and it's yeah. an acting too because i mean he was on that trajectory you know oh yeah above the rim uh what's the other one gang related uh poetic justice oh my god oh juice mm -hmm. oh juice oh i love that movie so much i love juice um Let's see. Let me think. Uh, other artists that have died that I wish were still. Uh, Robin Williams. You know, that's a one for me. I was uh, Robin. I think we're all. I I think we're all a Robin Williams fan. I don't think anybody's yeah. known. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he was iconic. I mean, just so iconic. Like him in, there's something you like him in, and then when you see him, you know, in interviews and stuff, and especially when he's low key, you know, he's a sweet, sweet guy. He did so much for charity. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely Robin Williams. Um, let me see. Um. Okay, that's three. <laughs> there, there are more. Matthew Perry, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. I just did a bunch of videos on him when I I, I happened to. I flew in L.A. the day after he passed away. I was already I was there. And then I had to fly out of L.A. to go somewhere. Then I flew. Then I was getting ready. I was packing, and then I was going to a, a party. And then I got my phone blew up, and I was like, "Oh man, like, that's just terrible." Yeah. And that was you know, heavy. And then I had to, then I landed in LA and I'm like, well, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to his house because I want to mm -hmm. see if people put up a memorial or what's going on there. And then I did a video from there. And then the next day, my friend flew into LA and he's like, can we go to Matthew Perry's house? I'm like, yeah, let's go. And it's nice. We got to meet some of his friends that were there taking care of the property. This is only three days after. And it was very, mm -hmm. very sweet and very calm. And, you know, I didn't. I didn't feel like I was intruding by by taking pictures or video that I did. You know, it was very um just talking about Matthew, you know. And um uh Brittany Murphy. I'm a huge oh, Brittany Murphy fan. 
huge yeah. Winnie the Pooh fan. I it's love her to death. And uh, so she'd be another one. I'm trying to think of ones I've done videos on that. I, they all kind of, everybody means something to me in some way. But, um, yeah. you know, Phil Hartman, as I said, Chris Farley. Yes. You know, yeah. I'm a huge those, SNL those fan. Those three would all be my list. Like Far, uh, Farley, Hartman, Murphy. I mean, they were just, there was something special about them. Yeah. Chris Farley was, was uh, he'd, be, he'd be 60 this year as well. Uh, so that's that's huge. Um, to be honest, uh, someone who's a celebrity, but not necessarily that type of celebrity, it would be jo uh, John F. Kennedy Jr. You know, I was a oh, huge John Jay. Huge, yeah, John John. I love John John. I love Carolyn Bassett and that whole 90s thing they had going on. And, you know, I went to their house on, I, it's not on Broom Street. Um, uh, it's in Soho. Broom Street's where Heath Ledger passed away. I forget the name of the street where Car John John and Carolyn's townhome was, like walk up apartment. But I went there after they passed away. This is waiting for you too. So, yeah, because I was a big fan. I went to I went to um, you know, the Kennedy compound when they were alive. Went there, took tons of pictures and stuff. It just fascinates me all that sort of stuff. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. You know, I there's. Proof, which Eminem's best friend, who's a rapper who I really liked his stuff and thought he was super talented, you know, really, really super talented guy. And there's a ton of musicians, you know, that. But anybody that's died young is is more that I feel like, you know, wish they had more of a shot, you know, longer time to show yeah, us it feels they, like we, what they were we missed from, from them or albums or movies or whatever. Yeah, Chris Cornell, you know, Lane Staley, there's Kurt. I, I forgot about Kurt. I mean, I have Kurt tattooed all over me. Kurt Cobain is one of my favorite yeah. artists. Yeah. So definitely Kurt. Somebody asked me the other day on on a live stream, I think it was somewhere like, do you think Foo Fighters would even exist if Kurt Cobain was still alive? And I said, yeah. And like, yeah. You can't hold Dave Grohl's explosive talent. The guy is incredible. He's just he's just just as talented as Kurt Cobain, if not more as much as I love Kurt. Um, so there's no holding back. There, you know, at some point, Dave would have made a solo album. Would it have been as popular? Maybe not. Exactly. Maybe not. Yeah, I think they would have gone on way. I think. No. Sorry to cut you off, man. Uh, I feel like at some point it would have happened. Like Nirvana would have dissolved, or at least they would have taken a long break. Um, yeah. I think um, Kurt and Michael Stipe would have done something together. I think they would have put out a few albums because that was yeah. like that, that. That came so close to happening, like so close, <laughs> like so yeah. close. That was, like I mean, it was it was a they were going to. And Michael Stipe is one of my favorite artists, and thank God he's still around. Um, yeah, they were going to. And I wish I wish they did. And uh, REM wrote uh, "Let Me In" for Kurt and recorded it with his guitar. Uh, yeah, they were huge fans of his. And Kurt loved R.E.M., which is great. Yeah, I think that would have been the natural progression. It would have been like, we probably would have gotten one or two more Nirvana albums, I think. And then they would have kind of yeah. done their own. I think Foo Fighters would have come uh, come about either way. I think Chris would have gone off to do his own thing. And then maybe they would have gotten back together periodically. Yeah. But I think organically, yeah. they would have gone off to do their own things, you know? Yeah, it's a weird thing that it's just, you know, like he just, what happened to him? And then that's it. Like... That's it for Nirvana. I would say three albums and done. Yeah, but it's crazy. Yeah, Kurt Kurt was one of the best. Definitely one of my favorites. And yeah, it's kind of crazy. There's people like that, like he and Farley and Brittany Murphy, where it's like they're, you know, I think you've even touched on this before, where it's like they're perpetually at that age. It's like they, they're always 27 or they're always 33 or whatever age it is that they passed away. It's like time doesn't affect them anymore. It's like, you know, it's like Kurt. Kurt will always be 27. Kurt was 27 when I was 12 and Kurt's yeah. still 20. Kurt's still 27 now. And it's like yeah. that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I read that the other day about, about Farley. And somebody said, they said today would have been his 60th birthday. I guess it was just recently. And I was just like, what would a 60 year old Chris Farley even look like? Or what would he be like? But uh, yeah. he, he'd still be, he's really crazy. And then finally, I would have to say, John Candy, because I'm a huge John Candy oh, fan. Too. 100%. 100. Yeah, that, I mean, that follow John Candy dying followed by Kurt Cobain a month later, back in 94. Yeah. Brutal. Brutal. Yeah. As a Canadian, we're, I, uh, 
we're so proud of our, you know, when other Canadians make it, we're so, you know, we love to say, and then of course, there's the Canadian self deprecation thing where somebody gets too famous, we're like, no, 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 come back down. No, no, no. Yeah. No, you're not that, no, you're not that good. That's what Canadians do to Canadians that get too successful. But I got to meet John Candy when I was young, and it's, there's a picture on my really? Instagram. Yeah, he was the nicest dude. The what nicest. were the circumstances? Like, how did that happen? I was doing uh, Second City. So I was taking Second City, and my class uh, got chosen, not chosen, we got asked to go to, they were doing the anniversary of Godspell, which is where John Candy, Martin Short, Eugene Levy, Catherine O'Hara, that's where they all got their start in Toronto before Second City. Okay. So they all came back to Toronto to do an anniversary show in the 90s. And so we got invited. So we got to go, which was awesome. So I went out back out the stage door uh, onto uh, whatever the street, Victoria Street down in downtown Toronto. I got I, I was just meeting the whole everybody. It was like for me as a teenager, I was losing my mind, losing my mind who I was getting. Me. And then I was like, I guess John Candy's not showing up like and I, I can't remember who else was like I was talking to about. I was there with my friend Robbie and classmates, but. My teacher, like the second instructor, Tim Sims, he went in and then. Robbie and I were out on the street like we better go in the show's about to start I'm like yeah but John Candy man like they said he's gonna be here no word of a lie we look down the street it's a little drizzly it's dark this giant is walking towards us pork pie hat overcoat it's fucking Uncle Buck like he looks he looked exactly like he had the whole look and if you look on my in Instagram I'll I send it to you if I can I'll find him he just yeah, came up to us and yeah, and he he did it, and he goes. I said to him, I said, "They're start, they're starting the the show, your your show that you're in." He goes, "They uh, they won't." He didn't say it arrogantly. He just said, uh, "They won't start without me." And it's you know, it's true. He was the biggest star. They're not going to start without John Candy, right? And he was so nice. Post from oh I oh no I don't have it here. I have an autograph, um, Captain Ron. No, autographed Uncle Buck poster. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you get in, in that moment? Like, did he sign it right then and there? Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. That is so iconic, man. Yeah, he is. He is one of the best. He would, he would one hundred percent just still be killing it. You know, he'd be on podcasts and still making movies, and ah, he oh, was yeah. one of the yeah, still be making movies. And still, I mean, he was making some <laughs> clunker at the end. You know, that's you know, delirious, wagons east or some. But he yeah. would have found. You know, he he also was in JFK and did an yeah. amazing role. In JFK, you know, and then. Every every actor goes through through that, but he's so beloved, you know. And then I'm sure two or three years later, he would have made some amazing movies again, you know. Yeah, ebbs and flows. Been... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, some of his last, I think it was Wagons East, Delirious, and there's one other movie he made near the end. It was just not great. Yeah, but you know, actors got to act, right? They got to make money. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like, who's Harry Crumb? Not one of his best, but still, you know, I'm glad it's yeah. out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who's Harry Crumb? That's funny you mentioned. Yeah. That's what that movie I wanted to love it so much. I really did. But it's, it's just there's some flat parts. But he can elevate anything, you know, he and he and I think he knew it at the time, like his his charisma and his little ticks and things that he had made any role funny. You know, he's yeah. so good. Yeah. He was amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. I had no idea you had met him. That's like, iconic dude oh yeah in the 90s i used to be uh, uh if, if i knew a celebrity i love celebrities right that's what my channel's about so if i knew a celebrity yeah. was in town i'd do it i'd do any go out of my way to try to find where they're staying or where they were gonna be and you know what premiere or where like you know whatever and try to meet them on the street whatever it was my you know, that's all i thought about <laughs> was candy was candy the first celebrity that you met was John Candy no I, that you met? No, uh, uh, Bono from U2 a few times. Madonna, which was crazy. Oh, George Michael. I told wow. the story of the George Michael and I got his autograph. And then a lot of um, wrestlers and hockey players. And then we just kept That's going. Cool. There was a hotel called the Four Seasons in downtown Toronto. The Four Seasons in every city. And every celebrity just stayed there. It was like, it wasn't, it was so like, you just sat in the lobby and then Tom Arnold would walk by. Then Green Day would walk by and just be like, you know, you get a picture taken with him. And all these pictures, of course, were on, you know, like pictures. So yeah. some of them are gone, some of them are around. So it's not like I um I had any connections or any in. Not at all. I would just I would just wait hours. 
<laughs> like you're just living, I'm just a you know, dumb kid just waiting to meet celebrities. Yeah. Now, out of all those, which, which helps out because that's what my channel's about celebrity mostly. That's amazing. So it, it, it translated nicely. Who yeah. who was like one of the aside from John Candy? Who was one of the best and nicest that you ever met? And then on the flip side, who was one of the coldest and worst that you ever met? Bono was Bono was the nicest for sure. 100 percent Bono was one of the coolest dude. I got to meet him over the course of six months, about three or four different times. And he remembered me, remember my friends, and he he talked to us for 45 minutes one day. Wow. And I talked to us. We were filming him with a camcorder. And all he said, all he said was, he goes, uh, would you mind putting the I'm not going to do an Irish accent. He goes, would you mind putting the camera down if you want to talk? And my friend's like, oh, sure. He goes, he goes, you know, yes. he goes, we want to talk, right? We don't want to, we, we, we're not, I forget what he said. He goes, we want to talk, right? He, as if to say, don't put a camera in my face while we're having a conversation. And he literally yeah. sat on the street with us. And then I think, again, I don't know where those, they're on my Instagram, but they're, they're, they're old. But um, that's the nicest dude, nicest dude. That's yeah, great and very genuine. And then the rudest Sandra Bernhard. Remember her? No. She was Madonna's best friend. She was a comedian. Uh, she was not nice. Oh, who else was it? There's somebody else. Uh, Eric Lindros, a hockey player, who was not nice as a kid, but he was nice as an adult. Interesting. Okay. Uh, he wasn't nice when he was a teenager. Most... Yeah, like downtown Toronto, <clears throat> especially... Well, still, like when the film festival's on and all that, like the Toronto Film Festival, one of the biggest world, like they just, oh, oh, uh, celebrities just walk around. So it was, it was really cool in the 90s and early 2000s. Chloe 70, we saw her. She didn't want, she wanted nothing to do with us. Yeah. You know, she, she did not want to talk. But there was nobody that was too, too rude. I don't think so. Tom Arnold was out of his mind. That was really cool, though. Yeah. He's just <laughs> super high or drunk or what? I don't know. We were sitting in the lobby waiting for somebody. I think we were waiting for REM. And um, I think it was REM. <clears throat> and he came over and I, I yelled, Tom. And he was walking around and he was just, I don't, I'm not going to say if he was high or drunk. This was the 90s. So, was, you know. Sure. And he went, oh, hey, what? Yeah, hey. And he came over to me and goes, hey, what's, what's up? What's going on? I was like, not too much, man. He goes, I know you. I know you, right? I know you. I was like, no, man. He's like, I don't know you. I'm like, no, man. He's like, oh. Yeah, okay. So he sat down and just started talking to us. He was like, I think he was just so, I forget what he was here for. I forget what he was here for. I could talk about celebrities all day. Because like, like I said, I don't, it's never because of, um, it was always luck and just, you know, I just loved doing it. You know, if there was a select, if, like if we went to New York City, my friends and I used to go to New York City, I'd be like, no, I'm going to hang out. You guys go you know, to whatever bar it is during the day or wherever you're going, Jay, I'm just going to go hang out by the back door of a Broadway theater and hopefully I can meet M. Emmett Walsh or some, or some weird-ass celebrity. I'll be like, yeah, I'll be just, there for four hours. I'm good. I'm going to hang out by David Letterman's back door. That's wild, man. When did that start for you? I feel like I have some of that, too, where it's like that that fascination, that obsession, but I think you've got it like times ten. So it's like... Yeah, I, did... don't, I don't... I actually don't have it any... There, I, I, there's certain celebrities I would love to meet, Eminem, you know, there's certain ones I would love to meet, but I don't have, I, I, I'm not going to, well, actually, that's not true because my friend and I left a, a concert, no, a hockey game, Leaf game a few months ago, and we walked by a, a concert hall on the way back to my car, and there was a giant, uh, like, tour bus, and I said, who's coming? Who's here? And it was Steve Martin and Martin Short doing wow. a two-minute show, and so Amazing. there's like 40 people waiting, so I said, my friend, let's wait. So I still do have it in me a bit, so we waited about 15 minutes and i was like i could see them getting the bus ready inside like stocking the fridge i was like they could be in there another hour and a half they're martin shorts from toronto you know hamilton from toronto i was like it's probably got family in there and friends we could be waiting two hours younger me would have sat down in the cold and waited two hours but now i'm just like eh, you know i want to yeah. meet them, I love to meet them but yeah so you never crossed paths with martin short or steve martin in the past Martin Short, yeah, I have pictures with him. Yeah, yeah he, he was at the Godspell thing. He was at the Godspell. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're, let, let me show. Sure. I think I may have. Hold on, let me show. You. Sure, sure. These are all. Uh, th this has been all pillaged of all my photos taken oh, out. Sweet. Nice. Unfortunately, they've all been taken out. But well, there's. 
there's John Candy right there, his autograph right there. Wow, I love that. Captain Ron, Martin Short's autograph is right there. It's hard to see. And oh, then sweet. Um, I keep this with such and then my favorite is from back in the days, the George Michael autograph. Oh, that's awesome. What were the what were the circumstances on getting that? <laughs> Being a very persistent uh I was with my best friend. We went, I, George Michael was in town. We were going to the concert. I said, let's go downtown and meet him. He's like, I don't know, man. You think we're really going to meet him? I was like, yeah, we're going to meet him. Four seasons, man. Um, I told this story. I'm, the, one of my beers did about him. We walk, We were walking down the street. We were eating hot dogs. It was a nice day. Coming out of Giorgio, which is an expensive store in New York, in New York, Toronto. I had two guys, then a third guy, then a big guy, then George Michael. I'm like, there he is. My friend dropped his hot dog, freaked out, panicked. I went right up to him, talked to him, got a picture. Then I asked for an autograph, and uh, he said, "Yeah." He said, "He said, mind if I uh, sit down?" And I said, "No." He, so he sat in the limo. He goes, "Have a seat." So I sat down beside him in the limo, and he signed wow. it. And he asked me if I was going to the show. Asked me what my favorite song of his was. Asked me who other, what other bands I'm interested in and music. Nicest guy in the world. Nicest guy. That is incredible. That's a special. Man. And his body, then they drove around the corner to another store. So my friend was like, I got to get an autograph now, too. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, no problem. We're friends. I'll, 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 I'll hook you up. <laughs> no, it didn't happen like that. We went around the corner. We got, we, we literally were watching George Michael's shop in another store. And the bodyguard came on and goes, got your picture and your autograph, man. You think maybe leave George uh, to, to spend the rest of the day? And I was like, yeah, well, my friend wants a picture. And so he goes, George is probably just going to go back to the hotel and rest now. I was like. Oh, okay. I was, I was like, oh, I'm not his best friend. Yeah. <laughs> we're not be, we're not hanging out forever and be, you know, chilling. <laughs> so cool you got that moment though. Like things yeah. like that. I mean, that's it seems so small, but it's not. Like it's like that's like something you'll remember forever, you know? Forever. I can picture it like it was yesterday. Yeah. I've stuff like that. Yeah. It also yeah. elevates them too. Like you know that George Michael wasn't being a douche. You know what I mean? He was being nice. He was oh. He didn't yeah, have to that would that. change that would change so much for me if, if a celebrity were were douchey or whatever I wouldn't I would, you know I maybe still listen to their music or watch movies if I really like them but I would totally change the way I wouldn't you know I would call them my favorite anymore or you know something like that so George Mike was just a down to earth guy you know that's awesome that's yeah. awesome man so what else do you have on the books right now I mean um I know you, you said you're going to go down to the panhandle and stuff, but I guess as far as like your creative process goes, do you like put everything on calendar and do you like have stuff like mapped out for like months and months and months, or is it just like a list and you get to it when it's convenient? And it seems like you do a lot of spontaneous stuff too. Yeah. I've been doing more spontaneous in the past year than I ever had before. We've, like it was always planned. Once the pan when the pandemic hit, I couldn't leave Canada, you know, could not leave. I had to rethink everything. But all of a sudden, my channels started getting so many more views because people were home. Yeah. So I started getting like my subscribers base went way up, and I was like, okay, that's what that's why I started doing it full time. And then I, but I couldn't leave, so I had to get creative. So I planned out trips, and then I had planned out when twenty twenty one rolled around. I had to really plan because you were still limited travel. You had to be vaccinated. You had to this um, uh, certain things in place. It was crazy, right? You remember. So yeah. I had to really plan 2021 and then 2022, I had a few big ones that I did. And then 2023, I was just like, okay, whatever's next. So I'll, I'll do next. I've got lists for, I got lists for the South, Northeast, mid, uh, mid States, and then West coast and then Pacific Northwest. I got like five. And so I'll check off and I'll delete as I go, make sure, see what I got. And then, I, I'll, you know, think, okay, where do I want to go next? You know, and um, I had plans to be somewhere April 4th, which then I would have been in San Francisco, Sacramento Bay Area afterward, and something fell through, so I canceled that whole trip just recently. I said, no, I'm not going to go all the way to the West Coast after coming, because I'm going to be in Alabama, Florida for a week. Then two days later, I have to go to far the West Coast. I was like, no. So then I've got Stuff I want to finish in Georgia and North Carolina. So something came up. Somebody offered me to do something in uh, North Carolina. So I was like, I could go and do all my, the rest of my Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina on that same trip. 
And it's a lot easier for me. It's a lot easier just on the on the East Coast because I'd be like, you know, if so, like my dog's healthy and all that, but I miss him so much. Like if you know, if I'm I'm there, I'm like I can fly home any second. L.A. you can fly home any second too. But I just feel I feel I'm a I'm an Eastern kid, you know. So I'm just love, especially in the spring summer. The East Coast is great, and um and I'll be back in L.A. I do I know I'll be back in L.A. end of May early June. Nice, then, you know. Usually, I've, usually by now, like I just had two people yesterday text me and said, when are you coming to this? When are you coming to this? And I said, you know what? Usually I would tell you by now when things in August, one thing I told I said, but I have no clue. I don't know. I'm just kind of enjoying just coming home, being home for a few weeks and go somewhere again. But I've got lists and lists. I'll never run. Good thing is for my channel, I'll never run out. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. I'll never run out. And I've got like never run out of ideas for sure. Because I can put really whatever I want now on the channel. Not they won't necessarily get views. I'm not arrogant saying, "Oh yeah, I can put whatever I want. People will watch." No, 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 no. <laughs> I can put stuff on that I that people won't watch, and I do do that, but not hoping that people will watch. But I've 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 also got videos from a year ago, two years ago, still to put up. Like I've got ton. The archive as well, huh? Oh my god! Like I I. It's beyond archiving. It's it's like it's like it's like hoarding yeah. situation in, in my in my on my hard drives. <laughs> like Scott, you like, got a problem? Yeah, I got that. Is I was actually no no word of a lie. I was thinking about because I used to film. I used to make myself film three videos a day wherever I went. I had to wow. film three videos a day, and then I realized recently I was like, that's I that's not as possible as it once was because my brain's and slower and <laughs> trying to remember all that information for three different videos and also you know drive the driving back and forth all these locations and then i'm like sometimes i'll film and then it's just it's i won't be happy with it it's not going up so now i try to do one to two videos a day if i even if i miss a day now when i'm on the road you know if it's research i'm doing one day then i'll film two videos the next day but i've got a I always think to myself when I get back, I didn't film enough. I didn't film enough. I should have filmed more. I should have filmed more. And then I've got, you know, 50, 60 videos that I could put up. Yeah. But I usually end up putting up the last few things I've done, you know. And when it comes to like the algorithm and everything, I think your channel's past that. You know what I mean? I mean, to an extent, it's like because you, you got, you know, the, the fan base and everything that follows you. But still, I know it's a factor. So, like, do you are, are you religious with uploading on the same days and same times, or are you just kind of like whatever? I'm just going to put it out when it's ready. No, well, no, I am. I'm you. I'm so not at that level where I can just put. It, I can't put up a video in the middle of the night and expect it to do well. You know, like that's uh, you're you're when I see people do that, I'm like, what? What are you doing? Why are you putting a video? Like, if they're small channels like me or smaller, I'm like, there's nobody up at that time. You know. Mm -hmm. There's people up on the in Australia, in England, but that's not your most of your views are coming from the states. So mm -hmm. I try to try to upload. I used to upload every day, every Tuesday, Thursday at five, and Saturday around four. And now I changed it to today. I put up a, today's Friday. I put up a video at three today, three o'clock, mm -hmm. um, a little earlier than usual. It's doing well. I put up a video. Uh, a couple of videos up at one in the afternoon on Sundays. Those do really well. So I'm always trying. I used to be very like set. This is when I do. This is when they upload. Whatever. But now I'm just like, I won't upload past seven o'clock. That'd be my cutoff, 7 p.m. I try not to. Even six, I don't want to. Anytime between three and six in the afternoon is good. Some people, some of my friends that are, you know, have huge channels, they'll upload at eight in the morning, nine in the morning, which can work. But I'm worried. I'm worried for the algorithm that my video just some of my viewers won't click on it, and it's all about the first half hour, right? Those viewers click yeah. on your video, it'll get in the algorithm. That's awesome. Yeah, I was just curious because I've, I've done for the longest time. I did mornings, and I'm like, yeah, that is not working. <laughs> like that is no. not working, man. It can it can work. It it does work for people, and I I've I've done it before. I've done it with a couple of videos, and. They grew over time, you know, it's over the day, they definitely grew. And then over time, they grew. And that's by the subject matter, I would assume, not mm -hmm. because of the, algorithm, the subject matter persevered. <clears throat> and at some, I've been so excited. I've uploaded them at like nine in the morning, like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And it's like, oh, nobody, nobody cares. <laughs> wow. And, this, and that video is dead. But then 
there's one that I uploaded. That's I, I want to. I don't know if it was 2023, May of 2023 or May of 2022. Anyway, it was a, it was a one I uploaded, and I thought this is going to be big. This is going to be popular. People are going to like this. Like it had like seven thousand views for like two or three months, and I was like, oh man, like. There go like that like I was I was certain and now it's at fifty six thousand views. I happened to look at it the other day. I was like, which video? Which video was that? I, was like, I think that's the Hollywood Museum one. Let me see. Could be the Hollywood Museum one. Yeah. I'm trying to think. There's two that were similar. That, uh, yeah, Hollywood Torture Museum. One year ago. So that was. What's this month? Yeah. So. I and mean, actually, so I film. I think I filmed that in. November of 2022? I don't know. I put it up a year ago, it says. But yeah, it had not much. Now it's at 51,000. But there was another one. Uh, oh, it's not here. I don't know. I don't know which one. There was another one, but that's the one I was thinking. Yeah. You never know. Someone had the... Pardon? That's wild, man. Yeah. I said it's crazy how some of them have slow growth over time. Like It's like you never know which one it's going to be. Oh, you never know. Like sometimes I, I'll look back at some videos. I'll be like, "Wow, that's I had no clue." Like you know, because you don't you don't really look back after a while at videos, but you get comments left on them, so then you know. And then every now and again, I'll get a ton of comments on one video. I'm like, "Oh, people are that's coming around again." People are watching that video, you know. And it, sometimes it's videos like I, you know, I, I like I said before, there's heavy editing, and I took a lot of research and work into a video. And it's met with a collective, you know, by my my viewers in the audience. And then there'll yeah. be other ones, like the one I just did a few weeks ago of the mausoleum in the Walmart cemetery. I don't know if you saw that one in the Walmart parking lot. Yeah. Literally the night before I, I was in Decatur beside that cemetery. I had to wake up and do a video in that cemetery. And so then before I went to sleep, I was like, I wonder what else is in Decatur area that I can do tomorrow before I go off to Lisa Lopez's grave, TLC. And I saw mausoleum because I had a list and I had I had Walmart mausoleum. I don't know what the hell that meant. I just wrote it. So yeah. then I, I Googled it. And I was like, oh, then I looked. And I was like, oh, it's 10 minutes away. I read the story. It's a paragraph long. I went there. I did. I, re, I re, just basically recited the paragraph from my head. And the gate happened to be open to go on top of the mausoleum. It's never open, apparently. So I went up and I was like, OK, that's cool. And I almost forgot I did the video. Then I was like, when I got home, I was like, oh, yeah, I should put that up. That's going to be an easy edit because there's no celebrities, nothing, no interviews or news reports. And yeah. Nice linear edit. Yeah, exactly. And then all of a sudden, it's at 160,000 views three weeks later. That's and I'm, awesome. like, I'm like, but why didn't you watch the one where I did all the work? <laughs> why don't you, you know, it's, you never know. You never know. That's what I always tell other like YouTubers when they ask me for advice. I'm like, just do what you love and do, do be passionate about it and prepare yourself to be surprised because you don't like you think oh nobody's gonna watch this nobody's you know why some people think that you never know you never know yeah. i did a, i did a, the my, my my michael jackson video which is what got me a ton of subscribers at first i basically mumble and walk around forest lawn glendale for 25 minutes uh -huh. and at the very end i talk about michael jackson where his grave is and that was the one all of a sudden that a million people a million and a half people watched and i was like that's no, I, I can do better than that. Don't watch that. But but it still helped. You know, it was amazing. Yeah. You know? What well, what was the turning point? I don't know if it was the MJ video or not, but what was this the point where it was like you're working a regular job, you're doing YouTube as a hobby, you're going hard, but it's still very much a hobby to the point where it's like, oh, this video took off, this video took off, this video took off. Maybe this can be my job now. Like what was that moment and what were those videos that were like the turning point for your channel? The Michael Jackson video was took me from 500 to like four, 500 subscribers to like 4,000 in a night. So that was like a big thing, you know, to see that. that's huge. Yeah. And then um, uh, there was one that got me from 50 to 50,000 to 75,000. I'd have to look back. That was a while ago. What I just remember going over and over. I was like, wow, this is. But when I hit about 78,000, 80,000 subscribers, and uh that's what i realized because it was not it was it, it was always uh uh this is what i'm going to do for a living yeah. this is what i'm going to do for a job so mm -hmm. i was always planning on it and then when the pandemic hit you know i had um 
uh, I had a lot of free time. I worked on stuff. My mom passed away during the pandemic. And I'm I was sorry. Like, oh, thank you. And I was like, thank you. I was looking after her. And all of a sudden I was like, I've got, you know, I've got a lot of free time all of a sudden. And my mom, you know, passed relatively young for what I think, you know, I think and I was like, she's not going to want me to sit around and not do what I want to do and, and do the other job too that I was doing. Just go yeah. for it. And I just went for it and it worked, you know, not every, and, I, and I'm blessed and I'm, ha- I'm, you know, a lot of luck. It's a lot. It takes a lot of skill to do YouTube. It takes a lot of uh, patience, but it takes a lot of luck. You know, it takes, a, it takes, there's a lot of luck involved too. And it's hard work, but I always tell people like, if you're, if you're passionate about what you do and if you love what you do, stay, stick with it and it can happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the determination is super obvious. I mean, it's like you are so consistent with putting out stuff and I love the variety of your content. Like, do you know, sense of humor, you can laugh to those, but all, you know, you're able to touch on various stuff, you know, uh, crime related stories, murders, people yeah. who passed away under tragic conditions. And it's like, you've got a very, a very cool balance that I think a lot of people appreciate. And also yeah. like, a video that I love that just absolutely cracked me up was your I'm moving to Florida. I got a new girlfriend video. That was like such a great video. Like that was that just gave me so many laughs, man. Like that was so did fun. You, did you see the first two I did? Did you ever see those? Of the of the I moved to Florida. I don't yeah. think so. I saw just the most recent one. No, oh, okay. So there's two other ones. There's I moved I moved to Florida volume one. That was two years ago. Last year I did I'm being kicked out of Florida, where I got kicked out, and then this is part three. So the one you saw is part. Okay, three. I watched that. One. I, didn't, I didn't watch the very first. I did not watch the very first one. Well, I would say if you're if you're bored, if you if you want, definitely watch the first two. I I, I enjoy making them. I I, I remember I distinctly because that the vacation park where they're made. That's where some viewers live, and they became friends of mine. They live north of here. They live about two hours north of Toronto. So. They always said, please come by when you're in Florida. And I was like, you know, and I, I think I'd met them in Toronto once. And they said, come by. So I was like, okay, it's near Tampa. It's not. It's like an hour and a half from Tampa. I was like, oh, man, this is far. And then, but I drove in that first day two years ago. And I look, and he they had to buzz me in. And then they gave me the code. And as I put in the code, I noticed the sign says five, five miles per hour, please. I was like, what? Five miles per hour. And then I looked down, there was a, uh, like a, one of those triangular signs and it said, potluck, Wednesday's potluck dinner canceled or something like that. And I was just like, what the fuck is happening at this place? There's so much, there's a lot, there's a lot of material for me to work with. So I said to my friend, I said, I think I, I think I got to make a video about people that live here. And I was like, I'm going to pretend I live here. And it just kind of took off. And then in the second one, I did a lot, a lot of parodies of famous YouTube videos, like ones that went viral. And I said the F word 75 times in the video in a few minutes just to see what I could get away nice. with. So it's a lot that's, of fun. That's your, uh, that's your Goodfellas right there. It was your Goodfellas. Yeah, this is my Goodfellas one. Yeah, I love doing those videos. You know, the the <laughs> one with my the, my girlfriend, Linda. Uh, I wasn't sure how that was going to work out because I had somebody else playing the, my girlfriend and she canceled at the last minute. So thank God my friend Kevin said, I think this lady Linda will do it. And I mean... She was just <laughs> it was crazy. She's not an actress, right? So, so those, those, so those, so those people there, like Linda, that was just like friend of a friend. Yeah, and it was just like just someone who was down to be funny and be in the video. Yeah, she, yeah, she was down to be in it. She, I, I hung out with her the day before for a little bit for like an hour while we talked and stuff. And I said, okay, I'll be back tomorrow to film the video. And of course, I was like an hour late because I was, you know, coming from. I stopped to get a bunch of props, and she's all pissed off. Like she's all she's drinking since eleven a.m. That's what they do down there. She's all pissed off me. I'm like, I'm like, I'm, like, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'll be ready for you soon. She go, what do you mean soon? I said, well, I got to film the rest of the video. I said it's probably about three or four hours. She's like, oh, for fuck's sake, fuck, fuck. She's so pissed off. <laughs> I was like, you're perfect, lady. Yeah. So those That's- are a lot of fun to do. That was that cracked me up. And that yeah. that kind of segues into my next question is I noticed half well, probably more than half the comments. Most of the comments were like, oh, this is funny, this is great. Then there are a few that are like, what are you doing? You know, how how could you make this video? You're throwing your your career away or whatever. You know, people that are just stupid that don't get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I wanted to ask you how it seems like you're an expert at dealing with haters. 
And it seems like you get a lot more love than hate, which is great. Um, but I notice sometimes on your Instagram, you know, you'll you'll call them out sometimes when they have like a particularly stupid comment. And I just wanted to hear like your uh, your methods on that, on dealing with the haters and not letting it affect you and kind of, yeah. you know, having a fun attitude about it. Yeah, I, got, I mean, I always like, OK, like. If like you said, I do get a lot more uh, love shown, thankfully, thank God, you know, because if you get a lot of hate, you're going to it's going to get to you. And it did sure. at the beginning. If I got a bad comment, I'd be like, oh, no, wait a minute. I, I I read a paragraph explaining myself bad to people. And then at some point, I was just like, you know, that's, some people are either just don't like you, the person, or they don't like the content or the story, or they disagree with you, or mm-hmm. there's the, the viewer the always that thinks that they're right. You know what I mean? Not necessarily yeah. I, I'm right, but they got to fight you. But I don't delete any comments. I never delete negative comments. So what you see up there is what people leave. So now, if there's anything, um, I, if there's anything racist, homophobic, sexist, I either call them out or delete it. I will delete it if mm-hmm. it's really bad. Yeah. If it's really bad. But a lot of times I want to leave that for other people to see. You know, other, I want other people to see what people write because you know you, you shouldn't write that. And yeah. um, if they insult, if they insult somebody who's with me in a video, like I'll, I'll a lot of times I film with friends or have a special guest. If they insult someone. You know, I'll I will delete that because I'm like, why are you like especially if it's a woman, why are you picking apart the way a woman looks? You know, why what what's wrong with you? Now, when it comes to my hair, yeah, that's always I mean, every video, there's at least one or two cons of my hair. And I'm like, can you be original? Like I get it. Like I look like Bert from Sesame Street. Come come at me with something funny. Make it funny. I'll laugh. Like, you know, but they just say, Who does your hair? or whatever. I'm just like, that's not funny. I'll just leave it up, but I, yeah. but like you said, there's some on the well, I'll put them up on Instagram if they're just particularly like, like some people all in caps, like no, no, why you said it, like they're you know like crazy. It's like why are you getting yeah. so worked up? Like what are you talking about? And they're always full of spelling mistakes, so I like to correct them on that. But exactly. you know, I try to be. Believe it or not, I I am very. I think I'm very very humble. I'm very very thankful. So I don't want and I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings by. So I'll cross out their name. But if somebody's rude, I'm going to give it back to them. If it's a critical, yeah. if it's a critical comment about what, like the sound, you know, I get that about, because I, I struggle with sound all the time. I'm filming outdoors in like crazy places. Yeah, the biggest, mic, yeah, the biggest mic is going to help it. So if somebody has a critical comment or, you know, about anything, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, like, you know, uh, I'll leave that up and I'll be like, thank, thank you for, you know, saying that. That's what you think. But if they're being rude or just being stupid. Now, again, if they're being stupid for stupid sakes, and I know they're being stupid, I find that funny. So I kind of like, oh, you're you're a troll like me. Oh, I get it. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love I love me. You know, you watch my videos. I like be joking around and making fun of people. You know, but I like making fun of myself. So if people are gonna be fun, I can't. If I got if I'm gonna dish it out, I gotta take it. You know, I'm fine. Absolutely. And sometimes people, it's kind of fun, like when when you have a little back and forth going. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, there's, there's got, I remember one night, it was about four years ago, somebody wrote to me something and it was so rude and I responded within a minute, right? And I, I wish I could remember this guy's name because we he uh, he was still watching me up until about a year or two ago and I responded. And then like two minutes later, he went back and went literally, oh shit, I really never thought you guys read these things. I was like, yeah, I read it. He's like, oh, I didn't really expect you to read that. And then we be, I was like, dude, yeah, of course I read it. He's like, oh, okay. And then we start talking. So sometimes, you know, people just want to say stuff. Some guy, I put up a very, um, yeah. I put up something about Jordan Davis, who was a young African American male that was murdered in Florida. I put that up the other day, and there's been comments from people that are, you know, negative toward uh, Jordan and negative toward uh, African Americans. And I've left those comments up. I'm, you know, I want people to read those. You know, yeah. I'm not going, I'm not going to delete delete their their racism you know i want that so it's good to let the let the people in the comment section tear them apart like it's like sometimes they, they yeah. present themselves and people you know they'll attack sometimes, sometimes. right sometimes I, I i did used to a few times when it would be a rude comment or something maybe racist sexist homophobic anything i would pin it <laughs> and then that way everybody would see it and then i started yeah. thinking 
and then, like this one lady got it. She must have had two hundred replies to to people just yelling back at her. And I forget what video it was, but I was like, that can be kind. That's kind of passive aggressive of me because I'm pinning the comment, making sure everybody sees it. You know. Yeah. So <laughs> I stopped pinning it, but I do put it on Insta. If somebody says I'm stupid, I'm sure you'll see one tonight if you watch my Instagram stories. I will put one. I put it up every time I see one. I'll just respond however I respond. <laughs> I think they're funny. I enjoy those. Thanks. It's like yeah. if you turn, you know, that hate, you know, into something funny and positive, I think it just it makes it so much better. You know, I heard a great quote one time where it says, hate never comes from above. It always comes from below. And it's true. It's always people that are like mm-hmm. jealous of you or not doing stuff that's nearly as interesting or they're just trolls. They're just fucking trolls, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, and like, I, I think, I guess for me, I also see... I think that any troll would see that at least I'm trying to put out good stuff and like I'm do, I'm going places and I'm doing and doing my research, but some are just going to hate. And I, you know, doesn't necessarily make them bad people. They're just, you know, they could be having going through something themselves and they want to take it out. And, you know, it's easy to take it out on a complete stranger and somebody who has a stupid haircut. So sometimes I was like, I don't, you know, like, okay, if you need to vent, vent, get it out. I get it. No, no, they're pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, let me think what else I want to talk about. Oh. As Sean, I watched your interview with Sean. Oh, I'm glad you watched that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was great. How did you guys connect? I, I like watching your guys' stuff when you collab. Uh, Sean, and, oh, uh, Sean and I met, uh, I think it was, okay, so 2022. Two, I. It could have been in 2022, early 2022, or or October. Oh no, it was right after um, Halloween Kills or the Halloween 2018 Halloween Kills. I went and did the filming locations mm-hmm. for, and I got into yeah. the house. I got she got to go into the the house from the movie from the from the other one, and. Yeah. Um, uh sean had done some not a video about it but he had done some work with another guy um oh, i forget his name he's got a website he's awesome he's a friend of sean's and i just thanked him in the video i just said by the way thanks to sean clark and the other gentleman uh i said for doing a lot of this research i said because because i always because some people like think you know so a lot of people go to filming locations and they act like they found them and I get I get really annoyed by that. I'm like, you didn't find it. You went to a website yeah. or you exactly. watched another video. Like I'll say if I found something, which is rare. I'm like, nowadays, back in the day when I started, I had to find a lot of them, you know, by looking around and stuff. But mostly everything's online right now. Like, oh, like every movie. So I thanked Sean and he wrote to me and said, Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I was like, okay, yeah, cool. Like, you know, we that was it. And then Adam the Woo is a friend of his who's a friend of mine, Adam called, and then Adam called me from the Halloween house one day, video nice. chat, that was before I even met him. We had planned to meet up, and we did. So we really hit it, Adam and I really hit it off, and we spent about a, almost a week and a half together filming around North Carolina and stuff. And then um, we were thinking about, okay, we should go to, we should do something with Sean Clark in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, let's do something with Sean. So Sean arranged this, um, he talked to Sean, and he arranged, Sean, so we all, it was me, Sean, Grim Life Collective, and Andrew, we each picked a spot, our favorite spot in LA. Mine was, That's awesome. mine was the race car, the race car area from Greece, but unfortunately we had to, that got, uh, there was so much construction, I had to change it to the thriller wall at the last minute. But anyway, so Sean had us do like a round table thing. And so then that's where we met for the first time in person. It was at the Fast Times restaurant. And then what? Ha- what? So and then we spent the day, we spent the day together. Me, Adam, Michael from Grim Life, and Sean. Before I remember commenting that video and saying, "This is my Avengers." <laughs> <laughs> That's I, love, I, love, I, love, I, love I don't know why I would be in that. I, I, don't think, I don't know. But what was funny? Man. So so Sean and so Adam and I were good friends, and I was friends with Michael. I, I've known Michael a while, but Sean and I didn't really know each other at all, and then. For some whatever reason, but because I I said some things to him during the day that he was like what, like he was annoyed by me, and then I could see him getting annoyed by me, and that to me is funny. 
So it turns out he had said to Adam before I got there, because they were waiting. I came from Hollywood. They came all the way from, I think, uh, where Sean lives down in Lake Forest and stuff. Uh-huh. And he said, I don't know if I want to film with this guy, Scott. Now that I think about it, man, is he a spaz like he looks like in his videos? He said something like that to Adam. And I was like, no, no, you'll like, you'll like him. He's cool. Sean told me this after we, you know, became really close. I was like, oh, man, I knew that day you had something against me. So we spent the whole day together. But we really, by the end of the day, we really clicked. And um, then we just kept kept in touch. And we just really, out of all the, I've met a lot of amazing people through YouTube. And uh, Sean is, I consider one of my closest friends now. Like, he's just, he's my guy. Like, he's he's got such a hard exterior, you know. He's got, he's got the Sean Clark, mm-hmm, uh-huh, mm-hmm. You know, and he's like the nicest, sweetest dude and so knowledgeable. And like he'll he'll he'd give you his right arm, you know. You know, he'll moan about it. He'll he'll, he'll be like, No, I don't want it. No, fuck, oh, fuck it. Here's my arm. And like he's like he's like, we became really close and um just a great guy. And I, I love hanging out with him. So we, awesome. we did, um he came here to Toronto, stayed at my house, and we just filmed all a bunch of videos for his channel and then we did a couple from mine. And um I, he said, "Well, do you want to do one for your channel?" He was, like he had a couple of ideas. I'm like, "Filming locations are really difficult to edit. You do them all. I'll just come along. <laughs> I want to see yeah. them. I want to see them." I said, "I don't even have yeah. to be in the video if you don't want. I just want to see them. I, I'm happy to because I want to see filming locations, but I don't want to do the editing." So yeah, so yeah, Sean, one of those guys that you know, my ride or die. I'll be friends with that guy for life. He's just really, really sweet. You know, and he introduced yeah. me to a lot of people and stuff, and we help each other out. Yeah, he's a very nice dude. I've I've talked to him a few times in person and you know over Zoom and yeah, he's a really sweet dude and super knowledgeable. And then uh, oh. Michael, Michael and Jessica, I, I met them a few years ago, and uh, they were cool enough to do an interview back you know when I was just starting out, and they were Thanks. super nice, and super cool. And we ended up we did like a half hour interview, but we ended up like hanging out talking for like two hours after that. And they were so cool, like they were just like some of the nicest people too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know Jessica that well. I've only met her a few times, but I've known Michael since we both start. He started YouTube a long time before me, but then we were both filming a lot around 2017, and that's how we came to know of each other. And we started talking online and stuff about various locations and stuff. Yeah, good guy. And um, again, like someone like Adam, who's you know been on YouTube forever. Seems oh, yeah. like he was my he was he was the one that I I discovered when I I was going watching film locations through his website. And then it would direct me sometimes to YouTube. And I'd be like, people have, I, I, this is a true story. Like people don't believe me when I say this, but up until about 2016, I thought YouTube had clips of the office and music videos. That's yeah. all I want. Like, I didn't know people had channels. I didn't know there, I didn't know anything like that. And then Adam's website started taking me to YouTube. I was like, this guy's going to where they filmed Children of the Corn and Fire 13. I said, I do that. But I don't film it. I'm gonna yeah. film it. You know, so he's a big inspiration for me. And then to actually get to meet and hang out with him, and he's you know down to earth, nice, sweet dude, so generous with his time and everything. You know, everybody's yeah. been really, really nice. That's that's a big thing with me. My my uh, mantra, I guess, is I don't hang out with assholes. You know, I'm too old for that. That's a great and, mantra. Yeah, I, I and it's true. Like if you see somebody in my video a video with me or me hang out with somebody. Maybe they think I'm an asshole. That, that's tough. That's possible. But I just don't, like everybody I film with is always the ni- nice people. Like when you, if you see somebody back in, on my channel again and again, it's because I love them. It's because I love being with them and, and doing stuff. You know? That's awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. Adam seems great. I mean, yeah. I've watched his stuff for a long time. And yeah, Grim Life, super cool. Sean Clark. And of course, you oh, coming, on, you. Dude, coming on the channel, man. I really appreciate it. Like this means a lot. Thank you. No problem, man. That was fun. I was, uh, yeah, I love, um, it was really great listening to, to you and Sean talk and stuff and then hearing him, hearing some of his stories that I hadn't heard before. And, you know, so you get, you get, you're doing well. You're getting. Thank you, man. Yeah. I'm fine. Oh, I'm yeah. People. Uh, yeah. It's a grind for sure, but uh, I enjoy doing it and it's fun and I get to connect with cool people. So it's, uh, it's awesome. I really like it. Yeah. And uh, you're in Phoenix, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm in Phoenix. Yep. I think um because I, I remember Sean said to you that I have a video that Sean wants to do. And he was like, What? It's like he, when I told him I he, he knows a bunch of videos I have, but one of them I said, Oh yeah, I did this, never put it up. And he was like, What? Like which weird locations did you go? And I said, All of them. 
And it's one of his, it's Raising Arizona, which is filmed all around you. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. We were just talking about that movie, like, when I was with my buddy Emma earlier, we were legitimately talking about that, like, an hour and a half ago. I love the movie. I loved, I loved seeing the locations. I did them all. And then I never, ever edited it or put it up. It spent two days on it. In was it a was it a perfectionist thing or was it just yeah it's a yeah it's a, yeah it's kind of just I I I had I I think I had no I had screenshots and um uh I had I had on my I had on the phone the fo- the film on my phone so I was matching everything up to the action mm-hmm. but I was filming with my friend Timmy and his son Timmy and they were great they, and his son's like you know 14, 15, so he's reenacting a lot of stuff and it was really funny. I just remember by the end of it, I was just like, like the sun and all that. And when I got back to Toronto, I was just like, so many people have done raising Arizona. I'll work on it later. And by that time I got onto something else. Yeah. So this is the one that's in the vaults that you think you might, you know, might see the light of day someday. I'd probably redo it now, but I I would, if I redid it, I would definitely say to Timmy and Timmy, you got to come back and do it with me. Cause they'd be, they'd be butthurt if I did it without them. <laughs> they, oh, yeah. What the hell? You spent two days with me, and uh, but there's a I did Bill and Ted, you yes. name it. There's a million movies I've done all the location. I don't want to say some of them because they will come out. But yeah. um, the two that I did just recently in uh, Utah and Nevada are definitely coming soon because they I spent two weeks on them, so I better do them. That's awesome, man. But I still love family locations. I just don't do them as much anymore because they're a hassle. You know? Yeah, the pain. I've only done one. I did, um, well, that's a lie. I've done a few. We did like, you know, some Bill and Ted locations and stuff. But I went to New Mexico last year and I did the the Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul locations, a bunch of them. Dude, that was a pain to edit. And that was one that did not get much love at all when I put it out. Maybe that's yeah. kind of oversaturated. A lot of people have done those. But I tried to kind of do some different ones from Better Call Saul. And dude, that was a that was a bitch to edit. That was like, and also like, did you, did you put screenshots in or, or screen clips? Did you put shots? I did. I did screenshots. I did like, you know, where it would be like Saul's office right. picture and then fade into what I actually right. filmed. And I, I had a couple video clips in there, but for the most part, it was just still frame pictures. But still, that was tough, man. Like much respect to like anyone who does like really substantial ones. I mean, that's like, that's a pain. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, I used to do like, I did Trading Day, 8 Mile, all my favorite movies, Fire 13 Part 3 and some of that. And I love doing them and I love fine locations. And then the ones that I just did recently, I love finding them. So I think I'm hopefully going to get back into being able to get over my uh, anger issues <laughs> about editing them, which is just not even <laughs> anger. It's like, oh, man, I got to do that. But did you go to the Breaking Bad house? I did not. That was one I skipped. And I said in the video because the lady who is a total psychopath who's there and she like likes to yell at people. And I yeah. thought, well, I, I was Ubering there to each location. I didn't run a car out. And that was mistake number one. But um, I didn't really have time last day, so I thought instead of going there, as fun as it would be to like provoke that lady and kind of troll her a little bit, I decided to go to uh, Mike Airman Trout's house. And I actually have a let me see. Oh, I can't find it. I had a rock from Mike Airman Trout's yard, literally right, right here. Nice. Uh, I don't know where I put it. But anyway, I took a rock from a story. But uh, that was pretty cool because I thought, well, not as many people do Mike Airman Trout's house or like the HHM offices and things like that from Better Call Saul. So I think I still got a pretty solid video, but I did skip the iconic Walter White house just because of that crazy lady. Yeah, I just watched a video with her the other day where she was freaking out. I mean, it's, I see her point to a point, but she's also, sure. there's my friend Adam, uh, not Adam the Wu, his name's Adam Ramirez. He's got a channel called Adam Was Here. And he's friends with her. He's a huge filming locations guy and a huge Breaking Bad fan. So he's got tons of yeah. videos from, I think it's even been inside the house, in the backyard. I don't even know. When I went to Austin, where he lives, wow. him and I did Dazed and Confused, Office Space, Fire 13th Reboot, all in like three days because he knew every location. He's like, okay, here, go here, here. But yeah, he, I would, if I, if you go back to New Mexico, I would go to the house. And just film the house across the street, whatever. You deal with her if you have to deal yeah. with her. You put up that video, yeah. you never know. It could be on the right day. All of a sudden, everybody yeah. wants to see the Breaking Bad house, and your video pops up first because it's the first, the latest. You could get 100,000 mm-hmm. views on a five-minute video of the house, even though there's literally 100,000 other videos of the house. 
Like that's it's true. Happened, it's happened to me with a few, few videos, man. I've I've been like, oh, a thousand people have done this already, and I'll put up one, and it's not because it's me, not because yeah. I have this particularly good video. Just the right time, the right time. Yeah, people that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and you never know. So, like, I'll sometimes I'll just go to a place, I'll be driving by, I'll be like, I'm gonna film this while I'm here. Quick little video, da da da. Do that. Yeah. And Gets ton, it'll get a ton of you. And then, like I said, there'll be other ones that I'll work on. <laughs> I'll have it mapped out and notes in my hand and all this stuff. And then nobody watches. So you never know. It's got to be, it's got to keep going. It's crazy how that works. It's like you could put, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks or months into something and yeah, nobody watches. Then you film something oh. for like 45 minutes and that shit blows up. Yeah, it kind of gives you um a little, uh, and I'm using this in a general term not the actual term because it kind of gives you a little ptsd because you if you if you work on something so long you upload it nobody watches it if that happens two or three times it kind of gets you a little like oh man i don't want to work so hard on this next video that what that is has a lot nobody's gonna watch it you know you say i do that all the time like oh what's the point of working on this one why don't you do this one instead yeah Yeah. at some point at some point you got to bite the bullet and you know do all do the editing and all that roll that which is which can be fun when you're when you as you know as you're a creator when you're done editing something it's a great feeling even if nobody watches the video i'm still like wow i created that yeah sometimes you know? it's out there sometimes yeah. there's been a few where i put them out there and like i'm just glad that it's out there i'm glad there's some record of it and if something happens to it in the future great if not it's like oh well it's like a little uh it's like a little diary entry you know what i mean yeah and actually just the um i don't know what it's at now but uh, let me see the um where is it Okay, so I just put up a video about John Benet Ramsey today. You know, the little girl from Colorado. Now that yeah. literally two days I was in Georgia. Two days before that, I was reading something, and then there was some. There's a picture of John Benet like in the down below, like other stories. So I clicked on it. it was oh, new, new developments. I was like oh, so I read it. Hmm. You know, I read the thing. Then I was driving to Jordan Davis's grave in Marietta. And I said this in the John Bonet video. I was driving to Jordan's grave. And as I was coming back, I decided, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to take the heavy traffic street. I'll go out of my way. And I'm driving down the street and I looked to my right. And I'm like, that's the church graveyard where John Bonet is. Cause I filmed there three years ago, four years ago. And I was like, Hey, there's new developments turned around, drove in, just did the video spur of the moment. Now it's doing better than anything else I've done in the past little while. You know what I mean? You never know. That's amazing. Like you said, timing, timing. Pardon? Yeah, timing, it's timing. timing. Just, you know, just if you if you're if, like I always, if if you're a channel that's like mine or like your travel channel, just film, 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 and then even if it's two minute, three minute video, or whatever, you know, put it up. You never know. Put it up. People want to see the same stuff sometimes, and you never know what's going to grab people's attention. I don't know. Like I, I have no clue. I know sometimes what the people I think want to see. I know I've, a few videos of mine I predicted were going to be big, and then a lot of ones I predicted were going to be big weren't. But you know, I'm just happy that people watch and I can do it for a living. Okay, so one question I ask everybody, uh, at least on this series, what was your first concert, and what was the last concert you went to? First concert was technically it was technically Dion Warwick, but I don't consider that because I was little, uh-huh. very, very little. Um, and I did it. I went with my parents, but my first concert was the Jacksons, the, oh, the cool. Jackson family. And again, yeah. I was little, I was on my father's shoulders, but I wanted to go. So my parents, you know, it wasn't, I, I was dragged to Dion War, probably kicking and screaming. I wasn't, you know, but I do like Dion War. She's a beautiful singer, beautiful woman. But yeah. at the time, I was not, I was like, what? No, I you know, I want to see my, you know, I want to see whoever was around them. The, so the Jacksons Victory Tour was my first concert. Uh, last concert, you too at the Sphere. Oh, nice! How was the Sphere? Amazing, amazing. Yeah. It took a take. It's very odd looking up because it's so high up, and then there's a lot of like you know with the lights and the visuals. You feel like you're on a boat at times, and then at other times they play. They were very uh, static shots of the band stuff, so you you'd be into the band and into the music. And other times it, it was just very U two ish. You know, they used everything to complement the sound. You know, and stuff, That's and then when it's a, something that they, you know, 
you don't need visuals other than the band you know so it was, it was amazing you know and that's you know, yeah that's on my list i want to go there i definitely want to see a show there yeah it's it's a great venue and it's good to, the last two times i've seen you too it's good because their fan base is getting so much older nobody wants to, once they're on the floor nobody wants to move so uh, me and my friend we just we're old too but we just like excuse me excuse me it's not like you know going to a concert back when you know you have to yeah. push your way through everybody people in March. All the guys are like, excuse me, excuse me. And they're like, oh, sorry, sorry. We go right to the front of the stage. That's the <laughs> bad. You go see an older band now, you know? And then before that was Bleachers. Pro- I love Bleachers. I saw them in November. They're really um, good. Yeah, there's, but U2 at the Sphere. Yeah, U2 at the Sphere was the last one. And Jackson's the first one, yeah. That's awesome. That's cool. And then in the same vein, what was the first movie you remember seeing on the big screen as a kid? And then what's the last movie you saw in a theater recently? First movie I remember seeing on the big screen in that I have a distinct memory of before, during, and after was Empire Strikes Back. Nice. I nice. Saw it, I saw it in Pennsylvania with my family. And uh my I remember I mu- I must have must have been whining and complaining on the drive home from Florida that we I'm not seeing because I was a huge Star Wars fan. So yeah. they they must have we must have stopped because we got a hotel in Pennsylvania. I, I, unfortunately, my parents are not around anymore for me to ask them. Was was I a little brat that night? Is that why we went to the Empire? Because my grandmother, who lived with us, was there too, and I always remember her before I saying, "What is? What are we seeing?" Like, and this, I was thinking to myself afterwards as an hour, like, I wonder what the hell she thought she was watching. You know, she was <laughs> she was with it. She was, you know, but I mean, yeah. she was like seventy or something. You know, she she I don't think she saw Star Wars. So what the hell? She also yeah. there's a Muppet on screen, then there's. You know, all this stuff. And then afterwards, I was in the parking lot. I, I still remember this mall with the cinemas. And I was trying to raise a branch with using, by using the force. And my sister oh. said, what are you doing? And I said, nothing. She goes, you're trying to use the force, aren't you? I was like, no. And I was. <laughs> That's the best. So, the, I guess the big question is, did the stick move? Nope. Nope. But, but I probably, because she broke my concentration. That's, That's probably true. what happened. You, you know, the force you need complete concentration the last yeah. movie i saw yeah. in the theater um oh um <laughs> i think it was uh um cocaine barrel nice that's one uh, i actually did not see that was really oh, awesome. i yeah. wanted to see it so bad then i went down to florida i was with uh adam the night i was with i was meeting adam the next morning so i was in orlando I got into Orlando at seven. I was at my hotel and I was like, okay, I'll just add it or whatever. Then I said, I want to have cocaine bear. Cause I had just done a video on the real cocaine bear two weeks before that in Kentucky. Yeah. And I wonder if cocaine bear is playing in Orlando. And then sure enough, it was playing like 15 minutes away. And I drove just to see it myself. And I loved it. I've seen it three times. That's awesome. Yeah. That one's on my list for whatever reason. I, just, I haven't watched it yet, but I, I will check it out. I think that's the last movie. That would be a year ago. This month round when it came out. Yeah, I don't know if I saw I don't know if I saw anything last summer in the theater or you didn't go see Oppenheimer or Barbie? Nope. nope. Didn't see either of those in the theater. Didn't um LA. No, I'm trying to think of the movie theaters near me that I would go to here. Okay, I go by that. No, no, that was the last. Yeah, cocaine bear. I think that's a solid choice. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, I like doing that. I just like asking people. It's like uh, kind of a running thing I want to do on this pod. So, yeah, it's a good, good thing to do. Cocaine Bear is a very um, subversive film. It's not what people think. It's, I mean, it is what people think. It, it starts off really good and then it goes from crazy to batshit crazy so fast. And it's just so, you know, like you've never seen before, but it's directed by Elizabeth Banks. You know, Elizabeth oh, Banks. Yeah. she was a very smart, uh, smart director, a smart person. And she was in a bunch of movies with um, David Wayne, Michael Showalter, Michael Ian Black, who did Wet Hot American Summer. I don't know if you um, know those movies. Yeah, right. Those are hilarious. Right. Yes. So there's a lot of references to those movies. And there's a lot of the music choices. And there's a lot of subtle hints to those movies. So nice. I know when people see Cocaine Bear, they're like, okay, it's funny. It's or it's you know it's stupid. So I'm like, yeah, but if you know Elizabeth Banks, you know this is a callback to this scene and this from Wet Hot American Summer. So it's you know, you'll like it. I highly recommend yeah. it. 
Red Hot American Summer and like, did you ever watch They Came Together with Amy Poehler? Oh, I could watch that movie every day. If you told Poehler. me that you're going to watch, I'd watch it again and again and again. It I is love so, it. The best thing about that movie is like the first time you watch it, hilarious. Then you introduce it to somebody and get to right. watch their reactions for the first time. Right. Gold. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Some people are like, what? I, I, I forget. Oh, I watch it with my friend, uh, my, one of my best friends, Michael, who's a film writer and producer. And, uh, Watch it here at my house, and he was he he loved it. He loved it. He like he's like me. He loves that type of humor, just so yeah. so smart, but also so dumb. Like the humor yeah. is very smart, but it's 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 you have to be very smart to to make a movie that dumb. You know yeah. what I mean? It's the like, per, it's the perfect balance. Yeah, yeah, I love that movie. Amy Poehler is just amazing. Oh, she's amazing. Well, Scott, I think that's gonna wrap it up for now, man. Yeah. But. Dude, thank you so much for doing this. Let everybody know. Well, like, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Can... Oh, dude, you're so welcome. Let everyone know where they can find you. All your links and such are going to be down below. Yes, yeah, Scott on Tape, Instagram, Scott on Tape, YouTube, uh, Scott on Tape Facebook group. And um, yeah, that's it. I have Twitter, but I'll, I mean, literally all I use it for is hockey. Yeah. I, I people follow me on Twitter and stuff. I don't, I never, I always forget that it's for my channel. So Instagram is the big Instagram and YouTube are the two big ones. Instagram to get people to go to YouTube and mm -hmm. anybody who's watched me before. Thank you very much. I appreciate it so much. And I appreciate you having me and watching my stuff, man. I Dude, love absolutely. It. Love your stuff. You're one of my all time favorite YouTubers and just having you on the show, just like, such an honor dude and so much fun talking to you i make sure i have all your links down below and yeah. uh hopefully if you had a good time we can do this again in the future man sure man yeah we got i got i i promise you there's one uh huge video coming out which is going to be documentary length so it's going to be probably about an hour and 20 minutes oh nice uh, that one will be depressing but the other ones coming well there's a lot of fun ones we'll talk after that <laughs> well i enjoy the depressing ones and i enjoy the fun ones just keep doing what you do man Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Awesome. All right, guys. We'll make it a great week and make your future selves proud and remain unfazed. Thanks for watching. All right, Scott. That was great, I like man. And remain unfazed. I like that. That's cool. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I came up with that a few years ago and I try to tack it on the end of every video. I think it's a fun little catchphrase. Yeah, it's cool, man.